Let us talk about few assumptions of uh, the classical linear regression model. So what are these assumptions? The, the, first, the first assumption says that model should be linear in parameters. I think I've told you earlier as well that uh, you have the model like this, so yi equals to beta one plus beta two xi plus ui. Where these beta one and beta two, these are parameters. So it could have been uh, non-linear in X, doesn't matter, but it should be linear in parameters. So we can estimate this model. There is no problem with this, but uh, the non-linearity in parameters will come then in case if you have beta two square or beta two cube or something like this, right? So if you have a model like this, uh, beta one, plus beta two square xi plus ui, uh, then it will not be solved using the ordinary least squares. I mean, it cannot be solved in the uh, uh, your uh, classical linear regression model, under classical linear regression model. You won't be able to solve this. So what we assume is that this is linear in parameters. That is important. The second assumption is that there has to be some variation in the x variable that is in the independent variable. So what do you mean by this? I hope you remember that we have calculated this thing. Beta two hat was summation of small xi yi whole upon summation of small xi square, right? This is what we have. Well, uh, and we could have also written is, written this like this. Because this small xi and small yi, these are the deviations from me. Uh, so if there is no variation in x, uh, that is uh, x is just a constant. So for example, uh, you say that the uh, income is dependent upon education. And if educate and if everyone's education is same, everyone's education is same, then what is explaining the difference in income of these individuals? So you go and you survey hundred people, and every one of them is just class twelfth class. And your model says that income is dependent upon education, and and most of them they have different levels of income, monthly incomes. So when income uh, is is different, but education levels is same. And you have said that income is dependent upon education. Then what on this earth is explaining the difference in income when your independent variable itself is not changing, right? So what do you have? There has to be some variability in X variable. Otherwise you would not be able to explain anything. And if there is no variability in the X variable, that is in case of the variance of X is zero, then in that case, this thing is also going to be equal to zero your denominator of this is going to be zero and you cannot estimate beta two hat. So you can think of like this, for example, if xi is uh, two, 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 two and two, right? And yi's are different, 10, three, seven, two, nine and so on. And you are saying that yi is dependent upon xi. Now yi's are different, but xi's are same. Achha, you tell me one thing, when you just find out this uh, mean of X, what will this come out to be? There are five twos. So summation of X i is 10. X bar would be summation of X i upon N. So it is 10 upon five, that is equal to two. So beta, when X bar is two, so you have X i minus X bar, yet this is going to be zero na? for all of them. So your numerator is also zero and denominator is also zero. I mean, you will not be able to estimate beta two hat. There is no way you can estimate beta two hat. And not only that, if you cannot estimate beta two hat, then how will you estimate beta one hat? You remember that beta one hat was what? Phi bar minus beta two hat X bar. When beta two hat is not estimated, how can you estimate uh, beta one hat? 
it won't be estimated now in case if x bar is zero then you can just say this all of this is zero doesn't matter i mean your beta one hat would be just equal to y bar that's the only thing which you can say but uh, in general these are the pro this is the problem and you would need i mean intuitively it, it also makes sense that if you are assuming that income is dependent upon education and if there is no variability in education then how in this earth you can explain that why uh, why income is different for these individuals that's an idea the third assumption is that the disturbance term uh, has to be equal to the the disturbance term has zero expectation so it means what eui is equal to zero for all i you remember what we said uh, when we talked about uh, the when we talked about uh, the error term in the last recording we said what we said this that error term includes the uh, all other factors which are not specifically included in the model so it it might include also uh, the the errors which you make due to the calculations or the terms which you have not included or there is uh, a specification uh, there is there, there is some uh, uh, problem with the specification of the model that is you should have included non linearities but you have not included it so those things uh, so what you are saying that is that the error term includes the effect of all the other variables which are not included in the model so what what is reasonable to assume the the thing which is reasonable to assume is this that you should assume that these other things which you have not included in the model on an average their effect on the dependent variable should be equal to zero that's what an idea so uh, ui represents all those factors which are not included in the model right so we will assume that these things are not systematically affecting the mean value of y that's it so do not systematically affect the we, this is what we're going to assume that they do not systematically affect <clears throat> the mean value of y. Right. Then the next assumption is that uh, the explanatory variables x they are uncorrelated with the disturbance term. You remember we what is it that we said that uh, x's are not changing? That is uh, here. Uh, if you just remember this, I'll go just a little back. Uh, that is for a given value of x. Uh, so for x we found out several y's. Uh, you remember that annual expenditure. So we said this, that if this is going to be the annual expenditure, then these are the different marks which people are getting. So X's are fixed. Uh, so X's are non-stochastic. Uh, so what is it that you will say out here is that uh, since X's are non-stochastic, um, they're uncorrelated with the disturbance term. Well, uh, what do you mean by this is this the covariance of x u what is the formula for covariance of x y your e x y minus e x into e y right so you have what that is here in this case e x u i minus e x i e y But x is being non stochastic, will come out of the expectation. They are constant because x's are fixed. Huh? Um, you take up one sample, for example, for the family income of 2 lakh rupees per annum, what are the marks of the different individuals? Then for the family income of 2 lakh to 5 lakh, what are the marks of the other individuals? These are the ways uh, you will do it. I mean, this is assuming that you've done the earlier recordings. Uh, X is being non-stochastic will come out of the expectation sign EY. This you have just assumed to be zero. Hmm. So if covariance of XI UI is zero, even the correlation is zero because the formula for uh, 
uh, your correlation is going to be what? Your covariance of x, y upon root of variance of x into root of variance of y. So if the numerator is zero, of course, correlation is going to be zero. That's that also you have done. You remember this, this thing? That also you have done better. This is nothing but just the formula for the covariance, the numerator out here. Okay. Then the other assumption is that the variance of each UI is constant or homoscedastic. Now, what do you mean by this? What you are assuming is that uh, if you survey a population, then uh, each will have uh, the, you can say, a variability around a mean which is constant, right? Each will have, for example, what I mean to say is this. So you survey a population. What is the homoscedasticity assumption is trying to tell you is that uh, you survey a population and you ask them about their consumption expenditures, right? And they will, say, and then you find out the mean consumption expenditure. So you are saying that uh, they will, I mean, they will be around mean much. I mean, they won't vary much around the mean. That is roughly speaking what homoscedasticity would be. The variance of each UI is constant or homoscedastic. So how do you write this? You write just this way. E of UI square is just equal to sigma square for all I. Now understand what do you mean by this? For example, you survey a, survey a population. You survey a few households and those are the low income households. You survey them and you ask them their consumption expenditure. And you find that most of them are spending on the same kind of goods and uh, the average means consumption expenditure is same for those households, right? You go to a little higher income level. Again, you find that, that within that group, the average uh, consumption expenditure for that particular group is also same. You go to a still higher. And this assumption is saying that even for the high income groups, for example, somebody who is earning, uh, whose family income is around one crore rupees per annum, even within those families, the average consumption expenditure is same. Now this looks good on assumption, but this may not be true. As far as the low income households are concerned, you can definitely assume that uh, since most of their income is going to be spent on the essential items. And mostly these essential items, they cost roughly the same. So the average expenditure is also going to be the same. But as your income is going to increase, there is going to be a huge variability in your spending patterns. For example, one family could be spending more on real estate. Some One family could be saving a lot. One family could be spending more on luxury. So there can be a huge variability in their consumption expenditures. So that assumption is called heteroscedasticity assumption. We'll talk about that. But initially, what we are assuming is the homoscedasticity assumption. That is E of UI square is equal to sigma square. That is for all I's, for all I's. That is for each income levels, these uh, E of UI square, that is the variance of the disturbance term is constant. That is just uh, constant. There is, there is no I out here. The moment I write I, Let's say I write it like this, then it becomes a heteroscedasticity assumption. Yeah. So this is what I wanted to say that the conditional distribution of each y corresponding to corresponding corresponding to the given value of x has the same variance. That is, uh, that is for for a low income household, the variability uh, in their consumption patterns around the mean that is same. For the high income households, the variability in the consumption pattern around their mean is same. That is what we are trying to say, right? But in general, this may not be true. Just imagine this, that the high income households can have a huge variability in their spending patterns and the low income household may not have a huge variability in the spending patterns. Then there is uh, the assumption that there is no autocorrelation between the two error terms. So you mean this, that is the covariance of u i u j is equal to zero for i not equal to j. 
right? Because in case if i is equal to j, then this covariance of ui ui would mean e of ui square. That means variance of ui, right? So you're saying i not equal to the covariance of u1 u2 that is equal to zero. So it means this that you take up the <clears throat> you take up the average of the error terms. So if one of the error term is above, then it should not happen that the second error term is also above. Or if the one error term is below, then it should not happen that the second error term is also below. So what do you mean is that these UIs should be completely random. That is the assumption of no autocorrelation. It means this that if U1 is above the mean value, it should not happen that U2 is also above the mean value. Or if U1 is above the mean value, it should not happen that U2 is uh, sorry, if u1 is below the mean value, then u2 is also below the mean value. So there is a direct relationship. So it should not happen that they are positively correlated. So this is the case of positive autocorrelation. And or it should not happen that they are also negatively related. That if u1 is above the mean value, then it should not happen that u2 is below the mean value. So negative autocorrelation is also ruled out in case of no autocorrelation. So what you mean is that uh, by no autocorrelation is that the error terms are completely random, right? So what do you mean is this that the error terms are random? The other assumption is that the regression model is correctly specified. Now, what do you mean by this? You mean this, that there is no specification bias. So there is no specification error in this. What do you mean by this? You mean this, that uh, supposedly if you're saying that income is dependent upon education. Now, you know it very well that income is not only dependent upon education. It also depends upon experience. It also depends upon geography. That is, for that matter, uh, for the same kind of job, you might earn more in US than in than in India. Uh, so, but you are not taking up those things into account, and you are saying that income is only dependent upon education. So there is a specification bias. You are omitting an important variable, or you can say that uh, uh, you include a completely irrelevant variable. For example, if you say that income is dependent upon education. And uh, you also say that the income is dependent upon the color of your eye. How does that matter? Uh, so that is completely irrelevant variable. So if you include an irrelevant variable, so you should not be omitting an important variable or including an irrelevant variable. There are, there are things which we will have to talk about later that what are the repercussions of adding an irrelevant variable or omitting an important variable, right? So. You mean this, that there is no specification bias? No specification bias or error. So basically you are saying your, when you omit an important variable, you do not include it not including an important variable that is omitted variable bias or you might include an irrelevant variable or you might include an irrelevant variable right so this is what i wanted to do in this class uh, so in the next class i think i'll talk about uh, uh, unbiasedness that is how do you um, how do you estimate or what are the conditions for the unbiasedness of an estimator right so we'll talk about what do you mean by unbiasedness and the unbiasedness of estimator of the OLS estimator right thank you beta